Coming up on sports, and we've got soccer highlights of all of our teams, Blaine Centennial and Spring Lake Park. Oh my, and it is homecoming night for all of our schools. That plus more coming up on Sports Den. And welcome to Sports Den. We're your host. This is Sports Den Homecoming version. How often yes. do we have all three of our schools have homecoming on the same all of them. Friday? All three awesome. of them. Yep, it was the great. Panthers, time. Bengals, and Cougars. Yep. Oh my. Oh my. We're your host. This is <laughs> Jeff Dinsmore. I'm Kenton Kipp. Jeff's back. Welcome back, Jeff. Um, back again. We missed you. Uh, thank you. It's Especially when it was Friendly Park highlight time. Hey. We definitely missed you there. <laughs> <laughs> But we had, uh, like I said, we had uh, homecoming from all three of our teams. Yep. And uh, our North Metro TV game of the week was the Champlain Park Rebels coming to Centennial for their homecoming. I thought they just played at home against Anoka last week. That's what I thought. Huh. Hmm. Oh, well, Cougars homecoming. And they've got a punishing ground game. They get a big play from their horse. Michael Diggins finds some open field. A 44-yard run down to the 20-yard line. And then on the next play, it's the fullback, Jordan Clark, right up the gut on the trap play, and they never even saw it coming. 20-yard touchdown run, extra point, Hans Gorowski, 7-0 Cougars lead early on. The Rebels come back. Check out this play on third down, senior quarterback Trevor Garrison on the run, just shovels, shovels it to the end zone. He gets his man, Matthew Janot. Five-yard touchdown, extra point miss, 7-6 Cougars still with a slight edge. Second quarter, Cougars. Michael Diggins slices, dices, and rumbles his way for a 22-yard touchdown run. Extra point miss, 13-6 Cougars with 3.16 left to play in the half. Jeff, there's plenty of time. Hey. The Rebels drive down the field, and Garrison lays it up for Bryce Marcourt on the fade. Goes up and gets it. Extra point is good, 13 all at the half. It was homecoming halftime. We see our king and queen. It's Amikali Teleshore, the king, and Megan Keenholz, the queen. We've seen both of them hey. on coaches and captains. That's great. Cross country and soccer. Third quarter, long drive capped off by Diggins, 10-yard. Touchdown, extra point, no good. Once again, 19-13. Cougars retake the lead. How he does this? Score touchdowns. Fourth quarter, Rebels respond in this rubber match. Garrison to Taylor oh. Abram, 28-yard. Touchdown, extra point, gives Champlain Park the lead. 20-19, a little... A little over eight minutes left in the half, in the, excuse me, in the, the game. Cougars drive, threatened with a fourth and ten. Quarterback Max Corey hits Pierre Roddy, saw the ball in the nick of time, makes a grab, and the drive is alive. This drive is finished off once again by Diggins. This time a five-yard touchdown run. They go for two and don't get it. 25-20 Cougars with the lead, but still, well over three minutes to go. Plenty of time for the Rebels. They're faced with their own fourth down. Garrison finds Bryce Marker wide open on the, at the six. That keeps the drive alive with 30 seconds to go. And then on the next play, Garrison rolls out and throws to the back of the end zone. And Abram is there. He makes a big catch oh. in the clutch. Touchdown Rebels. And they retake the lead with just 18 seconds to play. Check it out. A great catch. He got his foot down. It's touchdown Rebels. And the Cougars with very little time to answer the Rebels. Ugh. Answer to their answer. Two point conversion made it 25 20, excuse me, 28 25. Corey's throw down the field is picked off and the Rebels win it. Another tough loss at the end of the game to the Rebels. They just couldn't pull out the win. And I'm sorry, but Jeff, you do not storm the field on someone else's field no. in a regular season game, no. especially on homecoming. Ah, uh, yeah. Not, not a good Came idea. down to basically extra points the kicking game. Champion Park yeah. edged them out. Cougars yet another tough loss. It's not going to show up in the standings here, but uh, they've competed well against the other teams in Northwest Suburban Conference. But they're one and two and one and four overall. Uh, definitely going to the ground game here. They threw seven passes, only completed one. It was a first down and uh, a key uh, pass completion, but still 219 yards for Diggins, three touchdowns, Jordan Clark with 59 yards and a touchdown. 
and uh, some pretty good defense holding that offense in check for the most part. But Rebels Ooh. win, big day for Garrison, 235 yards and four touchdowns. Nice, nice good game on the ground as well. Abram only two catches, but both of them were scores, including the game winner. Bryce Marquardt, nine catches, 140 yards and a touchdown. And Juneau, 17 yards and a touchdown. And Michael Sales left the game in the first half, did not return. He's their big uh, bruising running back. I uh, didn't get word on if he's going to be with them next week. Is there a three and one conference, three and two overall? And uh, Centennial again falls to one and two in conference, one and four overall. And upcoming for them, they'll be at Maple Grove, who is now up at the top Ooh. of the conference. Yep. And uh, they'll be at Blaine before hosting Coon Rapids to wrap out the regular season. Well, you know what? That uh, going at their front, uh, field, that's that's not that's not good. That's not cool. They at all. Uh, no. they uh, escorted all those people off the field, and it was kind of a yeah. Really weird situation at the end of the yeah. game, but uh, <clears throat> unfortunately the Cougars not able to win on homecoming night. Yeah. I mean, they definitely wanted that game, but they That's just could not pull it out. Unreal. But All right, the Bengals also homecoming, and yep. they, they seem to schedule Coon Rapids for a lot of these homecoming <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good idea. <laughs> and uh, it was homecoming for Blaine, hosting the Cardinals of Coon Rapids, and Jeff, out comes the baby powder. Oh! And the baby powder blue unis. Bengals get a strike in the first quarter. Alex Copa to Joe Robel. He makes a grab and houses it. 56 yards. Extra point, Zach Wright, 7-0 Bengals. Second quarter, Kunlai Allende for a five-yard touchdown run as the baby powder <laughs> flying in the stands. Allende in from five yards out. Or excuse me, this one is Copa to Tyler Drulo for a 17-yard touchdown. Right out of the extra point there. That made it 14 to nothing. And then in the second quarter, Ayinde catches fire. Kunle, Ayinde, five-yard touchdown run. Right extra point, 21-0 Bengals. Looking good for the Bengals early on. Especially in those baby blues. <laughs> the powder. Run by Kunle Ayinde again this time from one yard out. Right the extra point, 28 nothing. Bengals at the break. Things are looking good. Third quarter, more Allende. This time on a one yard touchdown run. Again, right the extra point, 35 nothing. Bengals. Bengals aren't done. Still in the third quarter. Lemiaga, backup quarterback, hits Wiley on kind of the wide receiver screen there. He takes it in from 16 yards out. Right the extra point, 42 nothing. Bengals, Jeff. Still not done. It's the defense's turn. They haven't given up any points, but then again, they haven't scored any either. <laughs> that changed. Fumble on the play. It is picked up and returned for a touchdown by Logan Elton. Eight yard fumble recovery touchdown. Right the extra point. 49 nothing Bengals. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Let's take a look at this as a star wipe for a play of the week nominee. As you see, he ran into his own man. Ball comes loose. Elton picks it up. And that's a touchdown. Mm. Bengals defense comes up with another big play. This time they cause the fumble. Martin Shiroi, 25 yard fumble recovery touchdown. Two fumble recovery touchdowns in the third quarter mm. for the Bengals, 28 points in the third. As you see, another baby blue star wipe. Mm -hmm. And check out this play. He's not down yet, he's on one of his teammates. And Nice job by Martin to strip the ball out, and he takes it to the house, 25-yard touchdown. Right extra point, 56 nothing Bengals. The Cardinals get one on the fourth to give us our 56 to seven final, thanks to CTN for the footage. Copa, 210 yards and two touchdowns. They wanted to limit his interceptions, they did that. 84 yards on the ground for him, Allende, 71 yards and three scores. Rommel, just shy of 100 yards receiving on two catches and a touchdown. And uh, Wiley and Drulo, mm. touchdown grabs and Aggie, Aga, touchdown pass for him as uh, Osio. Right now they're looking at the top, of, they're uh, looking like they're at the top of standings, but I heard something about possibly having to forfeit the first two games of the season. So that would affect their bid for a conference title. But Tina Grace right with them, 3 0 in conference, 5 0 overall. Champion Park, 3 0 in conference. Blaine, 2 2 in conference, 3 2 overall. As uh, the Cardinals, 14 yards passing. And uh, Smith with 22 yards rushing and a touchdown. That was their uh, leading stat getter, along with Elliott, 48 yards on the ground. So a good win for the Bengals. They'll be at Champlain Park. That's going to be a good game. Remember back a decade ago when they just had some classic yep. Champlain Park Blaine games? We oh, might yeah. get one of those again. Yep. That's going to be big. That's it will be. be. And Spring Lake Park? 
yet another homecoming game hey. for us, and they hosted North St. Paul. Paul. Yeah, the, the uh, Polars. Polars. Last time uh, Spring Lake Park uh, played North St. Paul was uh, in the playoffs, and, and uh, they beat uh, Spring Lake Park, and it was... Uh, How long ago was that? It was quite a while. Uh, yeah. And they uh, used that uh, big, big red... The wagon? They, it, oh, yeah, it would oh. look like the wagon. But well, no one's got a big inflatable polar they have down there, do they? Yeah, exactly. The bear at the, yeah, the, big, the dealership? Yeah, or? the big snow. Uh, but we went to the uh, <laughs> homecoming against the uh, Panthers and North St. Paul, and it was homecoming for the Panthers right here. Look at this. Evans for 40 yards and a touchdown. Ah, didn't take long, did it? No. A second quarter. Evans again for one yard touchdown. E.G. Sweet, 25 yards, he goes to the score, and the Panthers are putting a hurt on the Polars, no doubt about it. Third quarter, watch this one. Grant Walker, he bubbled, bubbled, some. oh, that's a <laughs> touchdown right there. There is. Kick off, watch this. It is fumbled, Ryan Amundsen on the keeper, and the Panthers have it again. It's E.G. again. Now, you know what I told you before? He can do it all. Three yards, touchdown. How about some defense? Derek Marble. Watch this. Marble. Oh, that is a Ow. sweet. It's fumbled. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, oh, yeah I guess it was. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it, it is. This time, Zach Delcourt. And then it's Gabe Dahl. He gets him in for a touchdown. Watch this one. Here's another one. It whoop. Oh, you gotta, you gotta catch the ball. You do. Mm -hmm. More defense. <laughs> it was, it was all defense. I've heard they had a good defense. Yes. And we also see that they have a good defense. <laughs> That's visual proof that it's they really, have a good defense. It's really Park. They win 39 to nothing. Irondale is next. It's gonna be a big one. The Panthers. Austin Swenson passing two for six, 19 yards, and an interception. The very first uh, game he, er, he th threw a, an interception. First game of the of the uh, game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was very early on. Uh -huh. EJ, EG, EJ, rushing 16, 156 yards, two touchdowns. All he does, four touchdowns. Jared Evans, rushing 11 for 23 yards, two touchdowns. Grant Walter, he had uh, two, three, 26 yards. And Gabe Wall, uh, Dahl, four tackles, one fumble, a recovery for a touchdown. The Panthers on top, 4-0, 5-0 overall. But Irondale. Look at that. Irondale 4-0 in mm. conference. They play each other yeah, Friday that's night. It. That's one of those it. teams won't be defeated. One and, won't. And it's, they've got uh, Irondale and home against Chisago. And then they'll be uh, at St. Francis. So it's a, it's it's it, this is it for the Panthers. I mean they Where can, can they can do watch it? that Irondale Spring Lake Park game on Friday. It's gonna be huge. Where can they watch it? At, yeah, live, right here on North Metro TV. Not only North Metro TV, but CTV. So that entire Irondale, New uh, Brighton oh, uh, area as well. Is that so right? there? a good portion oh. of the North Suburban. You can watch that game live mm. and on the internets. Oh, okay. It's always there, And too. I'm going to be there, too. Good. Mm -hmm. We'll all be there. Mm -hmm. Other scores in the Northwest. Armstrong, 9-7 uh, to seven over Park Center. Quite the duel there. Maple Grove over Anoka. Big Osseo defeating Andover and Tina Grace. Blanks Elk River. Eagles looking good. Cooper beat Fridley 48 to 26. Irondale against Pinnell 28 to 14. And it was North Suburban or North Branch. Hey, all right. North Branch beat St. Louis by 42 to 35. St. Francis. Yeah, uh, no. Chisago Lakes 41 to 14. They're coming. They're coming. That's right. <laughs> All right, we featured a tennis match last Thursday between Irondale and Spring Lake Park. Mm -hmm. Singles, anyone? Hey. Hey. For Irondale, it was Jenna Tillman. For Spring Lake Park, it was Pax and Alto. First singles match. They're good friends off the court, but on the court, they are bitter rivals. Uh oh. Not really, but I'm trying to play it up for television. All here. right, good job. First set, Pax and Alto. Nice the cutting shot, drop shot on set point, and she takes the first set Paxinalto. six to nothing. Star wipe, take a look at that. That's Ooh. nice. In the second set, Tillman lobs one over Alto for a winner, and Tillman wins her first game. She ties it up at one game apiece. Things are looking up for her. And yes, you may take a bow. But it's Alto who uses every inch of the court as she takes the second set, six to one. Check out this shot. She's a master of this green painted area. 
She takes the second set and the match in straight sets. Our own JW Cox caught up with Paxton Alto after the match. I think I just kind of let loose and went for shots and went for winners that maybe I wouldn't have and not being so like cautious helps. So in the Panthers tennis team, we're going to go out a break. Before we do that, it's trivia question time. Uh oh. Our trivia question is what former Spring Lake Park football and basketball star played defensive end and he played some defensive tackle for the Golden Gophers football team? Ooh, oh, I know. Oh, it's a good one. If you think you know, Give us a call, 763-231-2809, or email us at sports at northmetrotv.com. Plenty mm. more sports in coming up. we got a whole lot of soccer Ooh. and some coaching captains coming up on the other side of this break. You're watching sports at North Metro TV. There's nothing you can do. That's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, nothing. You've had frozen pizza. You've had pizza old and cold. Oh, you've even had pizza that tastes like cardboard and ketchup. Well, what the heck? It's time to find out what pizza is supposed to taste like. It's time for Linwood Pizza. Linwood Pizza tastes the difference Fresh makes. In the nation, our agents are always there, helping make sure that when your life changes, your nationwide insurance coverage changes too. We put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation where protection is personal. Nationwide is on your side. In Anoka County, contact Twin Cities Insurance Group, your nationwide insurance agent. If you need seamless gutters, whether the job is large or small, you can say, I know a guy! For your full service landscaping, you can say, I know a guy. If you need commercial or residential lawn care, you can say, I know a guy. I'm Charlie Walker, and if you need professional seamless gutters, landscaping, and lawn care, you can say, I know a guy. With gold at all time high, take that rope and say bye bye. Earrings, bracelets, rings, and chains. We buy gold at your exchange. Don't send your gold to oh, someone strange. We buy gold at your exchange. Spring Lake Park, Frilly Blade. We buy gold at your exchange. Join Ben Hale and Danica Peterson every Friday on North Metro TV News. Hello everyone, thank you for focusing in on us and welcome back to Sports Den everyone. <laughs> Last week we asked a trivia question while Jeff was gone. Mm -hmm. It's what's, what's Jeff Dinsmore's IQ, I mean <laughs> jersey number when he played. Seven, what, what was the answer? 77. 77, that was the jersey number. Yeah. All right. My Who IQ? Won? 177. Yeah. 177, did you hear that <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? That is high. Not really. Especially for a sports guy. <laughs> so who won this week? Uh, I did. Good work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was I, that right? I knew you were smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's now time for some ah. soccer. I promised you soccer. There's plenty of it. All we right. had a Tuesday night doubleheader, and it was uh, Centennial Cougars. They turned a home game into a road game to work on the stadium, so they travel to take on the Blaine Bengals. And it's the Bengals that get on the board first in the first half. It's Durbin, the nice ball up ahead to Mitch Bogey. He jumps in the air and just gets enough on the ball to get it in. one nothing Bengals on the board. Later in the half, penalty kick, Colton Nelson. He puts it on the board. Yeah, 2 nothing Bengals. Later in the half, it's Bogey again. This time, he splits the D and beats the keeper. His second goal on the day. And it is three to zero Bengals. We see a trend. Later on in the first half, Jason Sheeler. He takes it up ahead, gets the angle, and takes the shot. Ooh. Four nothing Bengals. Then we go to the second half. Asher Bates adds one. And this one made it five to nothing Bengals. 
and then Bogey adds one more. And Jeff, when you have two and you add another one, that makes three, and my friends, that's a hat trick. Six nothing, the final, Bengals win. We caught up with Bogey and Bates after the game. Well, you know, we got me and Bates, me and Jason working up top, and uh, once we get the attack, we get six or seven guys in. And then you can just find the gaps, it's an easy split. I had my man Ian Durbin hit me on a couple passes, helping out with a few goals. Um, I think it's a great, uh, like Bogey said, we're on an eight win streak now, so we just gotta keep it up and push through the uh, B conference champs. There's sport that he wins. Yeah. Beware of Bengals. Beware of Bengals. Mm -hmm. well, all right, ladies' turn. Centennial Cougars and Jenna Roaring. She's a candidate for Miss Soccer Minnesota, and she's <laughs> got the moves. And I think, was that a giraffe? I think maybe. Hug? What was that? I don't know. All right, Bengals hosting this one. Brittany Montian, their leading goal scorer, gets a free kick. But Morgan Wurz comes up with the stop. <laughs> Later on in the first half, Jenna Roaring does what Roaring does. Unreal. She speeds ahead of everyone, beats the keeper, 1-0 Cougars. And Jenna Roaring wasn't done. In the second half, big booming kick up field. Roaring's going to run that one down. Pass the two defenders, pass the keeper, and it's 2-0 <laughs> Cougars. Jenna Roaring, all she does is score goals, Jeff. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that, that's sweet. Cougars get one more. Chelsea Weber gets the fans going. Her shot's deflected off a defender. It goes in. 3 nothing. Cougars lead. That would be the final score. The Cougars victorious. We caught up with Roaring and Wurz after the game. Um, it really helped having great balls played to me by my team, and then um, just dribbling really worked really well. Um, taking 1v1, even 1v2, uh, if I see space, I take it. Well, I think it helps out with a solid defense to keep the ball up, and we had a lot of good communication, and I don't know, I just thought we had really good defense. There's a sports Beware center. Beware of Cougars. All right. Beware of Bengals. Bobby, wow. an excellent Bobby. reader of t-shirts. Yeah. That's Bobby Erslin. Yeah. yeah. Nice so Brittany too, Montian Bobby. showing off the Bengals sports and shirts t-shirt. Jenna Roaring getting a Cougars t-shirt. Yeah. You too could win one if you're the athlete yeah. league or a trivia question winner. Like Jeff, he won a trivia question yep. this week. Mm -hmm. So a 3-0 victory for the Cougars. They'll be wrapping up the regular season Thursday night at home versus Champlin Park. The Bengals at Anoka and Centennial 5-1-2 and two in conference. They're not going to win conference this year, 9-1-2 and two overall, but they're looking to do some damage at the section tournament. And for the boys, uh, they, like the girls, will be hosting Champlain Park, or Centennial, I should say, and the Bengals at Anoka. And uh, Blaine's 7-1-1 one one in conference, 12-2-1 and one overall, so that Champlain Park game is going to go down for the conference yep. title, Jeff, and Centennial 3-4-1 and one in conference, 4-6-2 and two overall. That's going to be All right. One. Well, Spring Lake Park, St. Anthony Boys Soccer. Yep. Again, we'll have to push back the coaching captains to next week. Yep. Apologize. We should put that on our website at least so people yeah. can watch it. Exactly. Uh, let's take a look at some highlights. We had the Battle of the SLPs. And, Jeff, yep. which one will emerge as the SLP with the most SL in their park? Oh, well. We'll start with the fellas. Yeah. Corner headed in by Jake Crodel, and it's 1 0 Panthers. One for the good guys. And another <laughs> corner, another header. Another goal for Crotill and his magnificent headband. Mm. And it is 2 0 Panthers. He's excited. Jeff, more Crotill? Can you take more Crotill? Oh, Late yeah. in the half, Crotill again, speeding past the defender, oh. sliding the shot past the D and the keeper, and boom Ooh. goes the dynamite. Hat Jake. trick for the headband guy. Hey. Jake Crotill, the hat trick as smooth, natural, and refreshing as Diet Fresca with raspberry. Yeah. 3 0 Panthers win. Sweet. Ladies' turn. First half, Kirsten Whitney. The cross to Caitlin Monson. Goal for the Panthers, and it's a 1 0 lead. That lead would not last, however. Orioles would respond later in the half. Lauren Miller grabs the clear attempt, and she scores it. That tied it up at one goal apiece. And then it was Miller again later in the half. 
and she scores her 14th on the year that made it 2-1 Orioles and they wouldn't look back. 6-1 Orioles, the final. They split the battle of the SLPs thanks to Park TV Channel 16 for the footage. I see Stony Park leading Cooper one day offense. There's the, uh, right there, the Vanille on top 9-0, and 13-0 and overall. Did you know Gray 6-2-1, 10-2-2? -2. And Spring Lake Park, uh, you know, having a little tough time with the ladies. It is... Uh, We've all been there. Yeah, 3-4-1, three, 3-8-0. And, three, no. and for the boys, Tatino Grace on top, 8-0-1, 11-2-1. The Panthers right there, 8-1-0, 10-3-0. So uh, the Panthers uh, big time beating Cooper 6-1. to one. They've got uh, Irondale and at Moundsville, which is going to be a very, very tough Tough game for the Panthers. I think, uh, isn't that a section uh, foe of theirs? And yeah, yeah, they lost last year, last year as well. Yeah. Volleyball, Bengals sweeping the Pirates Sweet. under the proverbial rug. They'll be hosting Maple Grove in the fourth, at Elk River in the ninth, and then Centennial game, North Metro TV will be there on the 11th. Centennial losing 3-1 to Osseo. They'll be hosting Andover. They'll be in the St. Michael Andover tournament this weekend, the Bengals 6-0 in conference, 16-1 overall, and Centennial 2-4 in conference, and 6-8 overall. Spring Park Panthers lost to Tatino Grace, 3-0. They've got uh, Robbins and Cooper, Cooper, Lakeville North tournament, a big tournament at Lakeville's top. And uh, at home, it's friendly, and the Panthers, it's a little tough. They're 1-5 and 4-9 and and overall. Tatino Grace on top, 6-0 and Vanilla 6 and 1, so pretty tight there. Indeed. And uh, the Panthers, that Fridley Spring Park game next Tuesday will be on North Metro TV. Our Athletes of the Week this week, Yep. we got a couple of hat trickers. Mm -hmm. Mitch Bogey of Blaine Boys Soccer yep. and Jake Crotill of Spring Lake Park St. Anthony Boys Soccer are Athletes of the Week. All right. Uh, one of them has already gotten their t-shirt and the other guy, the headband guy, is going to get his <laughs> shirt. And did you see those awesome sports and t-shirts? Oh, That's what yeah. they're talking about. Now you can see for yourselves. Yeah. That's something that you want. That's Answer right. trivia questions. Mm -hmm. Be a phenomenal athlete like Jeff. Yep. You could be athlete of the week. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you could get yourself a very nice looking sports oh, and yeah. t-shirt. Heck yeah. All right. Speaking of nice looking, time now for our play of the week. I'm not going to spill it this time. Vent. Don't spill it. <coughs> Crack it open and enjoy. <laughs> play of the week, homecoming for the Bengals in their baby blues. Break out the baby powder. <laughs> Alex Copa's going long. Copa, Copa. And he hits Joe Robel. 56-yard touchdown strike. Copa to Robel. Uh-huh. That started it started a, uh, the first touchdown mm -hmm. of the eight touchdowns. There's the powder. There is your first half, first quarter dagger. How about again? <laughs> Anyways. Robo yeah. from Copa, 56 yards. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. How about looking at again? It's beautificent. Uh -huh. Thanks to CTN for the footage of that game, which you can watch on North Metro TV. Mm -hmm and for the highlights as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, upcoming games, volleyball and over at Centennial. That's Thursday night, that's live. We yeah. have football live on Friday live. night, seven o'clock for both those start times. And then we've got the Fridley Spring Park volleyball yep. next Tuesday night. And then Jeff, right around the corner. What's right around, what's around the corner? Uh, playoffs. Playoffs. Yeah. playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs. 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 NorthMetroTV.com is our website. Use the internet, you'll find it. Yep. You can find uh, good stuff on there. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, go and support your teams. And go Bengals. Go Panthers. And go Cougars. Go beat Irondale. Beat them. Beat them. Coach Wackman, I know he's, he, he's, he's a fan. He's a fan. He's a defensive coordinator. He's a fan. He's responsible for that defense we see. But he's a fan. He's good. He's so defensive. You he try asking the question. He's, he's so still defensive. a fan. Yeah, he is. Fan of sports, then? Yes, he is. I've watched.